Hi there, welcome back. This is lesson one in unit 12. So today we're starting a new unit, which is organic chem. So anything related to this unit will be under unit 12. Uh, joining us today is a special guest, Miss Vampus. Hi everyone, how's everyone doing? Um, hope you're all safe and sound. So like Miss Scanlon was saying, today our aim is what is organic chemistry? And today we're going to explore the properties of organic chemistry, the compounds that are involved, and why these specific um, elements are involved in organic chemistry. Okay? So before we jump into notes, just a quick uh, heads up on due dates. As of right now, nothing is due tonight. Just make sure you are following the calendar and any other announcements that come from your teacher. So main question of the day, what is organic chemistry? Right, and if we're looking at the slides, okay, organic chemistry is the study of compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen. Those two elements, super, super key um, in orgo. So like Ms. Vampa said, it's just, it ha th these compounds have to have carbon and hydrogen. So Vampus, do you think sodium chloride would be an organic compound? Hmm, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride involves NaCl. So are there any carbon and hydrogen elements in there? No. No. So therefore, it is not considered an organic compound. Ms. Galen, what about water? Well, water is H2O. We have the H and we have an O. Is having an H enough? Mm, no, I think it needs to also have a carbon, okay? So I would say no. Okay, so, so a lot of the compounds you guys have seen so far are compounds, but doesn't necessarily mean they're organic. That's right. Uh, fun fact, the two pictures that you see right here are the nano kids. This was their actual compounds that were synthesized a few years ago. It was like National Chemistry Day or whatever. And the scientist was tasked, wanted to try to make, you know, orgo fun for students. And so they made human shaped compounds. Very fun. Moving on. Moving ahead to the next slide. Why is carbon so special? All right, so some of the properties of carbon, we already know these, okay? Carbon has four valence electrons. Okay, if you look at the dot diagram, those single dots means that they are ready to be shared or paired. So remember, every element wants to fill that octet rule. So it has four empty spaces for things to attach. So with that, the different elements, so in this case, these H's, attach in those four spots, and it creates kind of like a tetrahedral or a tripod shape. Tetrahedral is a kind of cool sounding word. And we didn't spend much time going over molecular shapes this year, and we're not going to really anymore. But just know that it exists. And if you take AP Chem later on, you will have to know all of these shapes and more. That's right. So moving ahead to our next slide, um, carbon atoms, they bond with other carbon atoms. And that forms covalent chains or rings and networks. Okay, just a reminder, a covalent bond is when electrons are shared. So the next bullet points out that two adjacent carbon atoms can share up to three pairs of electrons. Ms. Scanlon, do you want to add anything to that? So remember we have, we talked about single, double, and triple bonds, and we're going to spend more time on this shortly. Um, but these carbon atoms can have single, double, and triple bonds. Quadruple bonds do not exist, so don't do that. Um, but each bond, like you've seen a million times before, is represented by that dash line. That's right. So moving forward, another fancy term is called hydrocarbons. And if you knew nothing about chemistry, you could probably even still figure out this definition. It's compounds with only hydrogen, hence the hydro, and carbon, hence the carbons. So hydrocarbons are anything with just hydrogen and carbon. So this beehive picture, we're not gonna go into how to, how to draw these later on, but each point represents a carbon. And we said carbon needs to have four bonds. So wherever there is not three lines coming off of that point, 
are these little H's. That's just an easier way for organic chemists to like draw stuff and not waste 500 years drawing pictures. That's right. So when we're talking about a hydrocarbon that is saturated, all that means is that um, there are single bonds between the carbon. Okay, so you'll see that below there's the three C's and that coming off of all the lines around the C's are H's. So that is a saturated hydrocarbon. So if we think back to our solutions unit, saturated means you cannot have, you've hit that sweet spot, you cannot add any more solute to that solvent. When we're talking about hydrocarbons, we had said, you know, every carbon can have four things coming off of it. And right now, carbon has four things coming off of it. So another way to remember it is that saturated begins with S and single bonds begins with S. So all saturated hydrocarbons have all single bonds. Moving forward, we have unsaturated hydrocarbons and that has at least one multiple bond. So like we said before, it can either be a double bond or a triple bond. Right. So double bonds, like we, again, this is stuff we've done in like September, October, November. Double bond has two lines. So remember each pair, ha each line shows a pair of electrons. And so if there's two lines, that's two pairs and four total electrons. And a triple bond, I added the little lines there because I couldn't type it. Three lines, which is a triple bond, so three pairs and six electrons. And here's what they look like in a compound. Yep. Moving forward. I didn't hear what you said. I had boxed in what they look like in a compound. Oh, in a compound. Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. Moving forward with properties of organic compounds. All right, so properties of organic compounds. Um, the bonds that are involved are involved with non-metal and non-metal, which form covalent bonds. So remember, that is when these electrons are shared. Um, generally speaking, organic compounds are insoluble, meaning they don't dissolve, because they're generally nonpolar. So if you take a quick thought back to memory lane. We talked about like dissolves like, and we know that water is polar. So water, which is polar, dissolves things with or, which are also polar. So if organic compounds are insoluble, meaning they have to be nonpolar. Other things, conductivity, they're not conductors, so they don't conduct electricity. Though organic acids, like we had said in the uh, acid-base unit, they can conduct electricity, though they're pretty poor conductors. Uh, another quick uh, review point, they have weak intermolecular forces. And so that means the, the attractions in between the different molecules are pretty weak. So it's kind of easy to just kind of break them apart. So that means they have low melting and boiling points. And they react generally kind of slow because there is a bunch of, when we see these different compounds, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it takes a lot of time to kind of break all of these compounds apart. So even though their intermolecular forces are weak, there's just a lot of like bonds that they need to break through. That's why the reactivity rate is low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, yeah. All right, so we're now going to jump ahead and talk about types of chemical formulas. All right, so the first thing, the molecular formula, right, is, this, is the type of formula that we've been working with. Another word for it are, is uh, chemical formulas. And this shows the number of atoms of each element in a compound. So this is a very, um, it's the least informative type of formula. And Ms. Scanlon's going to tell us why. So, for example, we have a molecular chemical formula, C5H12. And as you'll learn later on, that's the formula for something called pentane. But it could also be the formula for other compounds. And as we'll learn later on, you can use these same pieces, so these five, H, these five carbons and 12 H's, to create multiple different compounds, each of which have different names. 
So just having the formula is not enough. Right. So which leads us to structural formulas. Um, structural formulas, they show the number of atoms of each element and the arrangement of the atoms. So this is super informative. And this is what Ms. Scanlon was talking about. Like you can have um, five carbons and X amount of other elements, right? But the way they are arranged can differ. Um, and it's helpful, like, if we're in the classroom or physically together, you can actually have the, we have, like, physical carbons, like, they look like little balls that you can, like, arrange together. And that's what we would have done in person, but, you know, it's okay. So as Ms. Vampus was talking, I drew this lovely picture for you. If you count and pause the video, each of these compounds each have five carbons and 12 H's. But obviously they look different and they have different names. So we, we're going to spend multiple days on this later on, but it's kind of like a heads up of where we're going. And the last formula got a little bit cut off here uh, is a condensed formula. And we'll explain that what that means on the next slide. So next slide. So here are three examples and we gave you the structural formula. So let's work with condensed formula. What it is, it's the structural formula, but without all of the lines in kind of, it takes up less space. So one of the ways you're gonna wanna do this is break up the compound. So you have a carbon and then everything else attached to it in that little section. And then you just write the formula for each of these sections. So the first one, we have CH3. The second section, we have CH2. You have that one, two, three, four times. So you write that four times. And then you have CH3 at the end. So here you can see it's the kind of the same thing, but written in a slightly different way. Now scientists, like we have said before, are kind of lazy, and both of these ways are kind of hard to write. So what they write instead is the molecular formula. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons and we have 14 H's. So that's how all three of these things kind of relate to each other. If you wanted to, now is a good time to pause the video, try the last two, and then we will go over them together. Okay, so if you paused, welcome back. If we're <laughs> it's so weird doing this not with you guys. So yeah. if we break this up, the first part we have CH3. Then we have CH2, CH2, CH3. Again, we're just breaking up the compounds. We have carbon and the things attached to it. And then that formula would be C4H10. And the last one, we have, it works the same way, even though we have a double bond there, break it up the same way. We have CH3 in that first section, CH2 in the second, CH in the third, CH in the fourth, CH2, and I lost count, whatever the last one is, and CH3 in the last one. And if we're counting up and figuring out the molecular formula, we get C, one, two, three, four, five, six, C6, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve H's. So we're going to practice with the naming and condensed formulas kind of throughout the unit. So if you're still a little bit confused, it is okay. Moving forward, um, so just backing up a second, these were open chains, meaning they're just kind of, you know, a straight line, even though they're not really straight. And then we have closed chains, and these kind of form these circular type compounds. And we can call them, they have a whole class named aromatic compounds. And all that means is that they formed some kind of closed object. Um, just kind of to rehash, it says every comp element means, you know, eight electrons around it. That's the octet rule. We know this. We've talked about this literally all year. This is just a picture of some cool aromatic compounds. So moving forward is table Q. So now... There is an exception though, hydrogen, okay? It achieves its octet, meaning it's like full, 
um, with only two electrons around it. Okay, that's the exception for the aromatics. Okay. Good point, Miss Memphis. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now moving forward to table Q. If you haven't already done so, take out your reference table. So you'll see, who knows what page it is, is table Q. Now it says, gives it a fancy, you know, title of homologous series of hydrocarbons. And you might be thinking, oh, I know what homologous means. I saw that in living environment. And you did. But we talked about homologous chromosomes and how they're kind of part of the same pair. But if we think to like chem terms, we had said homo means the same or similar. And so things that are in the same homologous series First of all, there are three of them, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. And what that means, they're all part of the same family. So all these alkanes follow this general formula, which means for every carbon, so the n number of carbons, the H's, you have double plus two of them. So in this example, we have two carbons. And if we plug two into that little tiny formula, two times two is four, plus two is six, and you have six H's. So anything that fits that family is an alkane, and they all have single bonds. Same things with alkenes and alkynes, and we're going to spend more time on this tomorrow, but anything that fits a CnH2n formula, meaning they all have double bonds, are alkenes, and they end with Ene. And then alkynes, they have a triple bond, they fit this formula, and end in Yne. So you can kind of tell if compounds are related based on their names. Right. They were trying, scientists were doing this to try to make things a little bit easier. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and explore how to draw alkanes. And like we just said previously, alkanes are, involve all single bonds. Okay, they are organic compounds ending in Ane, A-N-E, representing a simple hydrocarbon chain with single bond. So here is table P, and this tells you kind of how to start the name. So remember, prefix means the beginning of the word, and then we're going to use these suffixes later on, which is the end of the word. So any alkane ends in A-N-E, and that means you have a single bond. So if you have one carbon in your compound, it starts with meth. If you have two, eth, three, prop, and you can continue. Four is but, not but. Um, that's always a fun running joke during in class during this unit. But let's kind of apply this into naming and drawing stuff. So here's our first example. We have C4H10. And so if you use table Q, that is an alkane because it fits into the cnh 2 n plus 2 formula. So one of the first ways I like to go about doing this is that we have four carbons. So you want to draw four carbons, all kind of connected to each other. And now we know carbon needs four lines coming off of it. So we add those extra lines. And then everything else should be an H. So H, 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 H. Okay. So if we just take stock of what we have, we have four carbons. We have 10 H's, so it does match the formula. And now we got to give it a name. So if you look at table P, how do we name something with four carbons? That's the prefix but, B-U-T. Is it but? It is not but. Minus, a, minus five points for Ms. Vampus. <laughs> yes, it's but, okay. And then? Notice at between every carbon, we have single bonds. And anything with single bonds, you name, you end the name with A, N, E. So that's butane. Okay. And then if we're going to write the condensed formula, same as before, split it up like that. So you get CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. Okay. Next one, we have hexane. So given the name, and these names will get longer and more complicated and scary, 
But if you break it down piece by piece, it's actually relatively simple and kind of fun. So hex, according to table P, Miss Vamp is how many carbons should hex be? Ooh, so I need to break that word down, right? Hex prefix is six. So looking at table P, number of carbon atoms would be six. Okay, so we got our six carbons in a row. And then we got to make sure we have those extra lines coming off of carbon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ms. Vampus, what does A-N-E mean? A-N-E. That means that it is a hydrocarbon chain with a single bond. So notice... Line. One dash. Between all the carbons, we have a single line. And now everything else needs to have... H's. So, draw in your H's, and this is time consuming, I am aware. We'll show you a shortcut soon. Okay, that's your compound. When you write your condensed formula, split it up like this, and you get CH3, 1, 2, 3, 4, CH2, 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 CH3. And your molecular formula, you have six carbons. And if you count them, you have 14 H's. And again, that, fo that fits into the formula on table Q for alkanes. Okay, let's do two more and then we'll call it a day. Cool. Next, we gave you the condensed formula. So okay. let's work backwards and write the molecular formula. So how many carbons do you see? One, two, three, four, five. Got five yes. of them. And how many H's? Uh, hold on. So you gotta do some multiplication. One, two, three, four, six. <laughs> Sorry. Six <laughs> is 12. We have 12 H's. Okay. So if you can notice quickly, this fits into the alkane table Q format. So we know we gonna have sing we're gonna have single bonds. So we have five carbons with single bonds. Everything else is going to be H's. Now, right now, I didn't draw the H's and I just have the lines to represent that an H goes there. That's okay to leave it like that. What you cannot do is just leave those five carbons. You have to show something coming off of it. So leaving it as I have right here, is totally fine. And again, if if we're gonna, how, how did you know that it was a uh, A A N E? So this fits the table Q formula for alkanes. For every carbon, there's twice the number plus two H's. Ah uh, yes. Okay. And then if we're gonna name it, we have five carbons, so that's pent. And then we have all single bonds. We know that from the picture and the formula, so it ends in A N E. Mm -hmm. So we have a pentane. Lastly, now we gave you the structural formula. So if you have one carbon, use table P, that means meth. And then there is only single bonds, so it has to end in A N E. So that's methane. Yep. If we're gonna write the condensed formula, it's CH4, because you can't break it up any more than that. And that's also the same as the molecular formula. So that's pretty much it for today. Tomorrow we're going to go into naming and drawing all of, a lot more of these compounds. So, right. so that concludes our intro to organic chemistry. Have a wonderful day. Bye, guys. Bye.